What's going on, YouTube? It's James with Shire Fantasy Battle Report. I got another battle report for you today. It's Corner Hammer, round number five, 2019, guys. So, um, yeah, I'm at Corner Hammer. I'm actually doing pretty decent. Uh, game one, two, and three, I got medium wins, which put me in, like, table three on game four. Game four, I lost, though. It would have been a close tie, maybe like a 10-10 or a 9-8 or 9-11, uh, 12-8, whatever. But, um... What ended up happening was my, if you watched my last battle report, my opponent uh, got a really big 12 on dice charge and got in and, and destroyed my unit and my biggest unit and got a lot of points towards the end. So I ended up getting a big loss. So I am probably like, I think like table seven or something like that going into game five. And I'm playing against Nicholas Hugel. Now, Nick Hugel, um, here's a picture of Nick real quick. Um, and I'll go over a picture of my army in a minute. Uh, Nick Hugel is part of the Juice Crew. Juice Crew is a group of us that play, uh, or used to play on Universal Battle. And when I say used to, it's because uh, myself and uh, Joseph Abel really don't play much nowadays. Um, but Nick plays religiously with Mr. Phil Carl and Chris Hines, as you guys know, Escaping and AZ, uh, Pete Reese, and uh, John Oaks. So that's the Juice Crew. Um, so. He, uh, you know, he, he play tests a lot of lists. He play tests a lot, and you guys might know him as Nick Creep on the forums. Um, so he, uh, he's a, uh, un I was gonna say Universal, Undying Dynasty player, and he, uh, yeah, that's basically what we're gonna go over. We're gonna go over a game here. So I'm playing my buddy Nick, and you know what? I haven't played my buddy Nick since probably like the year before. Um, it's been quite a while since the last time I played Nick. Actually, the last time I played Nick before this game, I know was a universal battle game and he just destroyed my army and this is already going into the point that this is probably pre-masters it was definitely pre-masters probably right around hogfest last year um so uh i know that it's been quite a time quite some time like six months eight months or so since the last time i played him he just wrecked me and it was and even then i was like i haven't been playing i haven't been doing much so uh let's go over what i have let's go over what he has and let's try to i'm going to try to make this battle report under 50 minutes because usually my game fives last a really long time so let's just kind of speed through it um all right so my army i got my squigs here i got uh 32 uh cave nashers uh i got my dogs you know the savage orc god bashers with uh extra hand weapons uh 28 of them fighting extra rank banner i got my uh goblins here on dogs I uh, got my 20 goblins of bows and just bows and shields. I got my uh, Doom Divers. I got my General, General Warboss Dread, Iron Tooth. He has a 3 up, 5 up, and a bunch of attacks. Um, I got my uh, K Pack. And then behind the K Pack, I got Baxter the Pyromaniac. Over here, I got my uh, Bazooka and the Horde. Bazooka and the Horde have uh, basically 35 uh, ish uh, goblins, Shady Gets, uh, Wizard, and uh, the BSB. All right, let's go over uh, my spells, or his spells, actually. He got Divination. He has Stars Line, Unerring Strikes, Crying, and Know Thy Enemy. Uh, he also has Spectral Blades, Ancestral Aid, uh, Hasten the Hour, and Touch of the Reaper. Um, going from, I'm going to try to do this picture here. This is a picture of Vanguards after deployment. Uh, we were playing, um, it looks like Marching Columns. If it wasn't Marching Columns, it was the other one where it's like you only get a quarter of the table or some shit. I think it might have been Marching Columns, though. Um, and then we are playing... I have no fucking clue what the scenario is. I just have no fucking clue. It might be Flags. It might just be Hold the Center. I don't fucking remember. I really don't remember. Nick, it's been a long time. What the fuck was our scenario? I don't know. It might have been Breakthrough. It was Breakthrough. It definitely was Breakthrough. Anyways, um... Once I heard it was breakthrough, I was kind of thinking like, man, there's no way in hell I'm going across the table. But let's go over really quick what he has. On the left, on the far left by his water bottle, he has two ambushing scorpions, which is his chaff. Uh, he has two units of uh, horsemen, skeleton horse cavalry. Uh, that's also his chaff. Then he has on the left a giant brick, and I mean a giant fucking brick of chariots. There's eight chariots. One of them's a character, I think like a pharaoh or something like that. Gives the unit like rerolls to hit or something i don't remember uh by his pant leg that is his giant brick of skeletons he has roughly 20 to 30 skeletons hand weapon shield but really that's just a bunker for his uh i want to say that's the arc of the ages i could be wrong i don't really know what the fuck it is but he does have a couple wizards in there uh with, obviously he has the two wizards he has the 
Evo and the Divination. Uh, he has a Brick of Shopti right in front of them, uh, about seven Shopti. And then he has his Tomb Reapers on the right. Okay? Um, I go ahead and I move like this. I, I just keep my army basically cornered. I am playing Corner Hammer at Corner Hammer. You guys understand that? That's the third game I'm saying this. I'm playing Corner Hammer at Corner Hammer. I am staying in the corner. I'm going to try to shoot him as much as I can. I do outrange his chariots. My chariots outrange his chariots, so I'm going to try to keep that. And I'm just trying to keep everything in my general bubble. He does have a couple snipe spells, which actually kind of scares me a bit, but let's go over uh, turn one. Orcs and Goblins turn... Or no, actually... I take that back. Undying Dynasties, turn one. Undying Dynasties, turn one. He doesn't do much movement. I don't have a picture of his movement phase. But his magic, he ends up doing Hasten the Hour, and he ends up sniping out a couple of my Shady Gits. What a bitch. All right. Um, over here, uh, his chariots are going to shoot in my chariots. They end up doing a wound, and that's it. That's all that happens. Going to go ahead in my turn. Turn one. Orcs and Goblins. Orcs and Goblins, turn one. Uh, don't have a picture of the fucking movement. Why do I? Why am I not taking? I think I'm goofing off with Nick too much. Today. I'm not even taking pictures of movement. Uh, Magic. I end up doing a Hand of Heaven. I go into his freaking chaff, and I end up killing four of the five horses, uh, which basically in my shooting phase, I'm going to just shoot into him just because I need to get rid of his chaff as much as possible. Uh, my Doom Diver ends up starting to pick wounds at his Tomb Reapers here. And, uh, yeah, it looks like I did two wounds, and that's about it. It's going to his turn. Turn to Undying Dynasties. Undying Dynasties turn two. He pops this fucking card, the Temporal Essence, and basically gives him and me, both are on our turns, um, basically uh, five and five, five dice, five tokens, but it also makes any time you roll a double, it counts as a miscast, which this is brutal. I don't know why more Undying Dynasty players don't play this. This is fucking brutal. So as you can see, there's his picture of his movement, actually. He's trying to chaff my, my savages. He's chaffing my my chariots. And uh, he moved his shopties with regen up into the middle of the field. He's pretty he's feeling pretty confident. He's coming to pincer me with his shopti and his tomb reapers, right? So um, he goes ahead and he does hasten the hour. And he ends up sniping my fucking BSB. He got one wound off on him last time, but now he got the second wound off. Kills my BSB. Kills another shady git. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. And then over here, he just shoots a couple wounds into my chap, but he doesn't kill my chap or panic them. Now, I'm telling you this, guys, right now, okay? You guys were asking about this last time when I did it in Masters. I'm going to tell you guys again right now. I am looking at it like, fuck, he already killed my BSB. He actually put a wound onto my wizard once, but not the second time. And... Or he might have done two wounds. He might have done two wounds to my wizard, actually, I think. So he's already sniping my characters. He's sniping my bunker. And I'm just like, this motherfucker's going to snipe me to death. What the fuck? It's my turn. Turn three. Or turn two. And I'm just like, well, I got to make a frenzy check with my savages. And they're like, let's go! Come on, bring it! And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I ended up calling out the wog. And uh, the savages are just going straight. And I'm like, well, fuck it. I, I, I don't want to go into the chaff. If I go into the chaff, I'm going to end up in the middle of the Reapers and the Shopti. I might as well just go for the Shopti. So my savages are going straight for the Shopti. My chariot's going to take out this damn scorpion. And they get in. Holy shit. They need like an 11 or some shit. They just went in like, ah, ha, 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 ha. let's kill them all. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about regen. Let's do this. Let's do this. So my squigs uh, end up taking out the, the horses. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my three dogs that are alive on the left ended up chaffing his chariots, which is just wonderful. Um, and I was able to put him in a position that I'm not going to be really in trouble. The one thing I'm worried about is if he charges into the dogs, kills the dogs, and then overruns into my savages. So I was kind of worried about, like, ooh, he could get there, but it's a little far. I didn't know what to do with my other chaff, so I just walked him right behind my savages. Um, part of the reason I did this was because if, just say, my savages lose that combat... Because they went in by themselves. I didn't really ask them to go in. They just, they were just like, ah! <laughs> right? So, so they went in by themselves. So I figured, um, I need to keep a general bubble. That's basically why my general's on the river. Um, if I put my dogs behind the savages and the savages run, he's going to run into the dogs on his turn. Eventually, my general on my turn. But that allows me a chance to over, or counter charge. That's what I'm, that's basically what I do with my chaff. But I don't know what else to do with my chaff. All right. Uh, my squad on the right was trying to go up to get the breakthrough, but basically I'm getting stopped by those Tomb Reapers, so I'm just going to try to shoot wounds into the Tomb Reapers with the Pyromancy, with the bow shots, with the Doom Divers. We'll see how that goes. Let's go into Magic. Magic, I still have Temporal Essence up, which sucks, which means I got five dice. 
I go ahead and I do a smite the unbeliever. I roll two sixes, and I fucking blow up my fucking wizard. But I did put lower toughness on his Shopti, which, okay, that's good. He stops uh, flaming swords, which that was going to happen no matter what. Fireball, I end up killing off one of these guys here. And, uh, yeah, uh, so he's going to go ahead and attack. Now, we're attacking, I believe, same time. Initiative 3 on both. I do get impact hits. I do do one wound with the impact hits. He's going to go ahead and attack, and he does a good chunk of hits. He does a good chunk of hits. He does, uh, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 wounds. Okay, I think he did more, but I made a couple ward saves. I go back, and I'm just going to show you the dice roll. I think I rolled 29 attacks. 29 attacks! Alright, when I go for the wound roll, I am not shitting you. I rolled 26 wounds. 20 fucking 6 wounds! He was like, what? <laughs> 26 wounds, dude! I mean, the fact that I lowered his toughness to, to 3 really just made the fucking savages just go, <laughs> I don't care how many fucking regens you're going to try to make. You can't make that many. You just can't make that many regens. Holy shit. And since I had the wog up, I'm going to overrun. And I overrun right into his fucking bunker with all his wizards and his Ark of the Ages and shit. And not only that, all his counter charges are blocked. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh my god, he was he was texting Chris Hines, uh, Skaven and AZ, um, he was texting him the whole time, and he's just like, he got 26 fucking wounds, 26 wounds, he's like, I can't fight those dice, I was just like, I can't believe that shit, That's, I didn't even plan this, I really didn't, pl you, do I look like a man with a plan? I really don't. Holy crap. I mean, he just, uh, on the top of two, he killed my my BSB and my wizard blew up, and I'm already thinking I lost. And then my fucking, my turn, bottom of turn two, my savages just decided to go, and it's like, they're just going on a rampage. Holy shit. Turn three, Undying Dynasties. Guys, this might be a fax game. Turn three, Undying Dynasties. Uh, he charges his Tomb Reapers into my squigs, which is fine. He's going to kill a good chunk of my squigs. My squigs might do a good chunk of damage back. Uh, I end up doing the Binding Scroll here to stop some of his healing abilities, but he's going to go ahead and just heal a, uh, one of these guys back up. Um, he does charge into my dogs over there. He popped up his other scorpions to stop my chariots, and basically that's how the table looks. Sorry if you guys heard that blast in your ears. I'm going to ignore that. Probably somebody calling saying that my... Uh, car's warranty has expired and they've been trying to reach me anyways um i don't even have a car all right anyways magic he does get ancestral aid up he does get spectral blades up which i really couldn't stop those but um he goes ahead in close combat as you can see the squigs are pretty depleted i did end up killing off two of his uh tomb reapers though and then basically there's only two left um over here <laughs> just, just a <laughs> oh man i don't even know Here's a chunk of dead skeletons. Uh, he ends up crumbling that much. I think that they live because the characters start absorbing the wounds from the from the recoil, but um, from the crumbling. But he ends up taking only like picking the wounds. One here, one here, one here, one here, and he ends up living. But they're all about to die in the next turn. It's going to be my turn. Orcs and goblins turn three. Orcs and goblins turn three. Uh, Baxter the pyromaniacs charging into that tip right there just to get in, just to get in. Um, my squad's gonna charge here just to get me extra combat res, um, and they all get in, of course. Um, basically, I don't charge into his, um, scorpion. I think the reason I didn't charge into his scorpion is because I chaffed him with my goblins, but if he overruns, he'll get into my chariots or something like that. I forgot what it was specifically, so I just decided I'm gonna leave the scorpion up for a turn, uh, just let him, uh, how was this? Basically, the chaff is where it needs to be. I'm not worried about killing his other stuff at the moment, um, as long as I can kill his his bunker. I'm just worried about killing his bunker, hoping he's crumbling and all that shit, right? Um, over here shooting, I end up shooting into this uh, scorpion, does a wound. Um, over here, impact hits alone, ended up doing six fucking wounds. I rolled a seven. I rolled a six plus one for the scythe. Uh, on the impact hits and that alone just killed these guys and he's like oh you lucky bastard if you didn't do it right then and there I was gonna kill your wizard I, I didn't even think about that I didn't even think my wizard was in danger but he just fucked me up or I just fucked him up excuse me uh, turn four uh, undying dynasty he does charge in here as you can see my savages did clear up the, the, the all the wizards up there and I just turned around now he's in a bad position I probably should have charged that scorpion probably 
Uh, anyways, that's how the table looks. Uh, turn my squigs around, and basically my squad is going up for the objective. My Technically, my orcs are in uh, the scenario right now, uh, but they're going to have to fight those chariots. It's going to be unavoidable. So my squad eventually gets to the breakthrough, and he can't stop me with that anyways. Uh, just there's nothing on that side of the table anymore. Um, as you can see, uh, that's how it is. I think close combat, he just killed my... my chaff and I just said fuck it um, over here uh, my turn orcs and goblins turn four yeah turn four savages are going into um, those chariots my chariots are going into a scorpion don't know why I didn't kill that scorpion before but I there must have been a reason I was thinking of um, or something I just don't see on this video uh, go ahead and I move my squigs up to help um, if this goes awful pretty much um, I'm trying to keep them far enough back I don't really think it matters um, I do have a plan here just in case uh, this fails, but uh, I'm just trying to keep him far enough back so if he kills the uh, savages, he just doesn't over, or if he causes me to flee, he just doesn't overrun into my squigs. Same thing with my general, same thing with Baxter. Magic got a three on the flux. Go ahead and I do a flaming sword on these guys, and he's just like, fuck, there it goes. He actually tried to stop it. I had five dice, did or four dice, and he went for five dice, and he failed to stop it. Um, and then, I don't know, I think that's just the dead scorpion. I reform my K-Pack like so. So that way if he does kill my savages and does overrun, he's overrunning into my own K-Pack. He cannot um, escape that, more or less. He can't force me to force it into my general. I'm more afraid of him charging into my general and just winning by like ranks. A rank and a banner or something like that. Something stupid. Or killing my squigs off and doing the same thing. Uh, close combat. My savages end up killing off three of his chariots. His chariots end up killing off a shit ton of my savages, but there's just not enough bodies for my savages to do anything on this his turn. It's going to start off I think it's his, his turn or my turn? His turn, I think it is. I think I just have the numbers out of whack here. Maybe. Anyways. Undying Dynasties. Uh, turn, he ends up just killing off a bunch of my savages. He does make me run. Um, I can't really do much about that, but I did kill off a couple more of his chariots. He really doesn't have a way to heal his chariots, which is his problem, because I kill all his wizards. Um, he is going to win combat. He is going to overrun. He does overrun into my K-Pack. It's going to start off my turn. Orcs and Goblins turn 5. Orcs and Goblins turn 5. I'm going to charge into the flank with hit my squigs, which was planned. Uh, squigs get into the flank, um, and then I just go ahead and I move everybody up. I turn my, my goblins into bus formation in case that breaks. I'm going to have a bus of goblins there and I think I just I, oh my characters are dead never mind <laughs> uh, back to the pyromaniacs going up to the side just to get a, a, a flank charge in the next turn so is my general uh, his turn turn five um, as you can see oh no actually I think this is my turn I don't even know I, I think I'm just skipping pictures here anyways uh, I ended up charging in we stuck there for a round he killed my k-pack but he didn't really do too many wounds um, and then I charge in and I just pop his unit um, which basically he has nothing left on the table um, so it's going to be a 19-1 because he killed a couple of my characters. He did kill uh, uh, my savages, which are a good chunk of points. So I did get a 19-1 on him. Um, it did put me up really freaking high at the last game uh, because all the tables ahead of me weren't in the 20-0 range. i um, going to go ahead and say this. Uh, so on game three, um, Matt Reich was ahead of me in points. Matt Reich is another Orc and Goblin player. Um, and I was I noticed that game four we were in the same room. He was on table one. I was on table three He did play Bergy and he did get uh, smoked So I got smoked as well against my demon player. So on game five He was on the table next to me and he really 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 needed to win to take Best orcs and goblins and I got a huge win. He got a decent win. We are neck and neck on best orc and goblin player Okay, so we're gonna go over the the pictures here of the wieners all right so let's go over the races uh then i'll go over how my army did after who won best races and who won the whole thing overall so best warriors of the dark guy with a very blurry picture is mr team america himself captain america ryan caps the doctor he won best warriors of the dark gods mr dave fought when won best vampire covenant um he beat my my buddy from the juice crew robert for it uh, best Vermin Swarm went to Mr. Schweitzer. Uh, best Sylvan Elves went to, I don't know if it's Rob or Roe, but it's one of the Navarre's brothers. I can't tell. Can you? I don't know. Anyways, I just realized he has a Triforce on his arm, though. 
All right. Um, I'm going to skip this picture because this is the best Orkin Goblin player, and it's going to go into the spoiler of who won it. Uh, best Ogre Con is I, this guy. I don't know who this is. Is this Ben Mitchell? I think this might be Ben Mitchell. I could be wrong. I'm going to say it's Ben Mitchell. If you guys know who it is and it's not Ben Mitchell, let me know. Mr. Tulmir from freaking Team Turkey came out, and he won Best Kingdom of Ecotain. Uh which is just an awesome uh, show by him. He actually moved to the States recently, so he's been playing in a lot of U.S. tournaments, but it's awesome to have Tomir here uh, playing. Uh, best Infernal Dwarves is, this is one of the Ratmans, I believe. Um, I don't know why I didn't pull this up. Show mine, go to 2018. I'm just pulling this up, sorry, guys. Uh, let's go to who was at this tournament. Ryan Caps was at this tournament. Corner Hammer. All right. Yeah, it's Andrew Ratman. All right. So he won Best uh, Infernal Dwarves. Best Highborn Elves went to Frankie Septa, one of my loyal viewers here. Um, best Empire of the Sandstall is one of the Thundercocks. One of the Thundercocks came out. Uh, this is Felix, and uh, he ended up playing... Um, a Joel at turn of the first one because the first game because they were trying to see who's the real best of the empire and they challenged each other. So uh, Mr. Felix ended up going home with a best empire of the sun still. Uh, Mr. Jeff Durham took best dwarven holds. Uh, he's also on Team USA um, as well as oh best dread elves went to my round two opponent. Uh, this is from Team England. Mr. What's his name? Newman? No. I'm drawing a blank. Why am I drawing a blank? Why am I drawing a blank? Adam Tonka Jones. I don't know why I was thinking it was Newman. Um, uh, Adam Jones, he took uh, Best Dread Elves. Uh, going into Best Demon Legions went to Mr. C.R. Dunn, who ended up winning last year's Corner Hammer. Uh, and then here's the other Navaris. So one of them took best beast. Or one of them took best Sylvan. Now they, they ended up sweeping both, which is just hilarious. Uh, so I want to say this one's Rob and that one's Row. I want to say that. I can't tell. Here I'm gonna put pictures side by side there. You can see one, then you can see the other. I can't tell. Maybe one just took the sweater off and it's the same guy. Who the fuck knows? All right. Anyways, uh, best sports here. I think this is Kirk Wagonek. Um. Yeah, I think it's Kirk Wagonak. If he's not best sports, this is the Wooden Spoon Award, which he ended up getting a, a bottle of vodka. Um, best Undying Dynasties went to Nick Hugel, even though I, <laughs> I gave him a rough uh, round five. I don't think he had much competition on the Undying Dynasties, though. Uh, oh, no, best sports here goes to Mike Maddox. Um, and then uh, best Orc and Goblin. I ended up getting a, a talking to in front of Matt Reich, actually. But uh, Lenny came up to me, and Lenny's like, dude, you actually won two trophies. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I won Best Orc and Goblins, and I won Best Paint, but he only let me take one. And I said, all right, I'm going to be fair about this. Matt Reich gave me a hell of a time trying to keep up with him the whole time he was on a table ahead of me until the end. I beat him up by like a point or two maybe. I don't even remember. So I said, he really deserves the Best Orc and Goblin vote. I'm like, but... Let's go over, let's look at the best paints. And I was like, you know what? I'll take the best paint. He could take the best Orc and Goblin because he gave me such a hell of a good time. So Matt Reich got best ONG. And I took the best painted. And then Justin Berge ended up taking the best general. He got the most points, but he didn't get the best overall. Best overall went to Mr. Joe Finlayson. All right. That was Corner Hammer, guys. I got it under, I got it under 50 minutes. Holy shit. I didn't think I could get it done that fast. But it was a fast game. It was a really fast game. All right, let's go over really quick what I have on my on my points, and then I'm gonna just get out of here. I wanted to get this battle report done before I go to Buckeye Battles this weekend. Um, it might be a very eventful Buckeye Battles. We'll find out. And then I still have. There was another tournament I went to after Corner Hammer. It was it. Oh, Wicked Wicked GT that was run by the Navarre's Twins. All right, so uh, let's go over really quick. In ninth place was my. Thaumaturgy Wizard, uh, who ended up taking 782 points, um, which is actually pretty decent for the last place. I Usually my last place is like 100 points, 200 points, so for him taking 782 points was pretty nice for just Hand of Heavens and Comets. Um, 
Eighth place went to the squad, which is only my unit of 20 goblins, but they did a lot. They ended up taking a couple of objectives. They ended up taking flanks and stuff like that, which is just great. And they did pretty good. My Doom Divers ended up taking seventh place, which isn't horrible for what they're worth. Let's look at the value. They're about 200 apiece, so that's 400, 400, 800. Eh, that's not that great. You get your figure 400 times by five is 2,000. They didn't even take up half their points, uh, make up half their points back, but they did pick off some crucial wounds on shit that needed to die, which you really can't judge it on that. I mean, you got to judge it on the whole, uh, you know, what they did in general and in, in total. Uh, going into sixth place is another disappointment, which is my general war boss dread. He only got 1,100 points, taking up sixth place. Um, he didn't really die. I don't think he died in any games. I think he lived the whole tournament, which is great. Um, so, you know, people complain, oh, he's on a wyvern, he's gonna get killed. Ah, man, he did fine. He'll be fine. Alright, fifth place goes to the K-Pack, which is very disappointing for what they're worth. Um, 1,300 points. You know, either they're really good or they're really bad. More or less, lately, they've been really bad. I think it's just this list isn't really maximized for the K-Pack, which is, uh, it's probably going to be an ongoing issue because I'm playing the K-Pack in the next two tournaments. Um, and then fourth place went to the Squigs. Squigs ended up taking 1,500 points, almost 1,600 points, um, which is pretty decent for what they do. I mean, it probably broke even in fourth place, which is not bad. Um, they're a very expendable unit, which is pretty good, and they're, people are afraid of them, which they should be. Uh, third place goes to Bazooka and the Horde. I actually thought Bazooka and the Horde were in second place. I think they were in first for a while. They were until this round. This round, fucking Baxter and, and uh, the first place winners just took a chunk of points. Uh, so Bazooka and the Horde took uh, a total of 2,900 points, which is pretty damn decent. They, that unit has never let me down, really. I think that unit is pretty damn solid. Um, and I will continue to use it in the list until I find a reason why I shouldn't. Um, second place went to Baxter the Pyromaniac. That motherfucking Pyromaniac took almost 3,000 points alone. Jesus fucking Christ. We'll see how he does in this next tournament at Buckeyes. First place went to the Savage Orcs. The Savage Orcs took a total of 4,200 points. Now, half of those points, 4,200, half of those points were in this game alone. Half of those points were in this game alone. So that's insane. They are also this game's MVP, of course. Guys, I try to get you that video as fast as I could so I can get to my workout and also so you guys don't have a 50 minute uh, video to watch. Um, I will try to upload this one before Buckeyes and then um, I still have to edit it. And then um, I'll try to get like maybe another game in from Wicked before I leave to Buckeyes. But if I don't, you guys will have to wait till after. Uh, so next week. But anyways, guys, hope you guys are enjoying these and I enjoy making them. And until next time, take care and peace. And if you want to show any appreciation for my channel, you could always go to my Patreon. That is, the link is down below. All right, guys, till next time, peace.